Hello everyone, here are OS Reviews. You're watching our retro throwback of the Samsung Omnia HD, or the i8-910, in 2018. This was a flagship smartphone originally released in 2009, making it almost a decade old. And back then, it was a very exciting phone. It had an 8 megapixel camera on the back, one of the highest at the time, which was capable of recording HD quality video, also at first. And it also used a capacitive touchscreen as opposed to resistive, which was more common uh, almost a decade ago, especially if you look at Windows Mobile smartphones. They often had screens which were plasticky and required you to use a lot of force. This was actually made by Corning Gorilla Glass, so it has uh, a lot more precision and accuracy. You can just gently swipe like modern day devices for it to respond. It actually used the Symbian OS version 9.4 operating system as opposed to the aforementioned Windows Mobile, which was also kind of interesting. I consider the Omnia HD as part of a trio of phones, in fact. Uh, other phones, uh, in this particular trio, including the Samsung Innovate, as well as the Samsung Pixin 12. So all three of these phones actually use Symbian OS as their operating systems, and all three are classified as camera phones or multimedia phones. And that's because the Innovate, as the name suggests, has an 8 megapixel camera. This came out a little earlier and doesn't have HD video recording. And the Pixon 12, although technically has a higher 12 megapixel sensor, also is not able to capture HD quality video. And it also has an AMOLED display similar to the Omnia HD, but this one comes in at a smaller 3.1 inches versus 3.1 7 inches, making the Omnia HD uh, more of a large phone almost 10 years ago. But of course today, with 6-inch smartphones around, it seems like a petite toy that slides easily into pockets and is still pretty easy to take with you when traveling. So on the very top, there's access to a front-facing camera. There are a few proximity light sensors. Underneath, we had a single-core 600 megahertz processor coupled with 256 megabytes of RAM. And down below, there were three keys, one which took you to uh, the multitasking, uh, also the menu, and talk and end keys. On the side, there's access to a physical key for taking images. There's a flap that covers up the micro USB port for charging. The battery size is 1,500 milliamp hours, which was actually okay for a smaller phone. And there's also a lock key that you can tap on to lock the touchscreen so it doesn't accidentally trigger when you put it into your pockets. Very top, there's a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There is one speaker and there's another speaker on the bottom. So the uh, Omnia HD really was multimedia centric. It was again, one of the first phones that had stereo speakers on its design, making the music and movie watching experience one of the best back then. On the back, again, we have access to an 8, 8 megapixel camera, and we also had a micro SD card for expanding the memory inside. Uh, the phone came with 8 gigs of built-in memory out of the box, which was also considered as pretty sufficient uh, back in 2009. The rim here, which looks like chrome, is also made out of aluminum, so it gives the phone actually a very premium feel. It's a little ironic because looking back at this device and then what's happened since, there was definitely a period in Samsung's smartphone manufacturing history from 2000, let's say 10 to 2013, 14 with our ga galaxy of Android phones. So turning the phone on again, we're greeted to Symbian OS and Samsung has definitely customized this uh, to a large extent compared to what you'll find on a Nokia smartphone at the same time, such as the N97, for instance. Um, again, the screen is very sensitive because it's capacitive in nature. Simply swipe it along and it registers just fine. However, it does not support multi-touch. This is more of a software limitation than a hardware limitation. So Samsung's uh, skin on top of Symbian OS is called TouchWiz, so that should sound very familiar if you use their Android-based phones, but it looks, of course, very different here. And back in the day, they had this widget bar on the side which was okay, but it was hard to expand on the number of widgets uh, aside from what came included out of the box. But you did have access to some shortcuts to things like a YouTube uh, app. There was also access to their proprietary app store. There's also settings, um, things like a MP3 player, FM radio, so on and so forth. And the Omnia HD as a pretty flagship level smartphone also came equipped with all the standard wireless connectivity options. Uh, that includes Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, so it's completely covered in that sense. All right, so taking a closer look at the screen first, you can tell that immediately it's actually a pretty vibrant panel, despite not being extremely pixel dense anymore by today's standards. However, it still offers actually very punchy looking colors and wide and generous viewing angles as, as expected from an AMOLED display. So the contrast is excellent. So the camera was one of the biggest selling points of the Omnia HD, and for the most part, it lives up to that hype. Uh, I found that uh, even today, 
If you have a little bit of patience, considering that the shutter speed is nowhere near as fast as modern day smartphones, you actually get a sufficient amount of detail in your shots that are easy to crop, share onto social media, and you'll still be fairly impressed with the overall uh, accuracy of the image as well. It doesn't seem to overexpose too much. Although the interface itself is fairly simplistic, there are a few different scene modes that we can choose from, whether it's single continuous panorama, uh, smile shot, so it detects a smile and then captures the image. I can also select different scenes, including Sports, sunsets, there's also text, uh, dawn, candlelight, backlight. And again, taking a look at some of these images I captured using the camera just a few days ago, I am still fairly impressed with the overall quality. Maybe it's the ammo, the nature of the display that's helping, but certainly it looks very punchy, and details are still present in your shot as well. You have the ability to send it, to uh, do some quick editing such as cropping, applying filters, and uh, you can also swipe back and forth between next images. Um, again, you don't have pinch to zoom, so you can't actually use this gesture to navigate, but you can also long hold and then swipe up or down to zoom in and zoom out. The menu interface here of the gallery is also pretty cool. You can swipe back and forth and it divides it alphabetically depending on the name of the shot. And there's also an accelerometer which you can use to tilt the phone back and forth between your images, which is a software trick that we continue to see today under advanced settings for Samsung phones on their Android offerings. So you can see a lot of these borrowed ideas that started off in the early days of Samsung's smartphones. So in terms of widgets, they're also not quite as complex as what you'll find on an Android device, but you can tap and it takes you to a shortcut of an app, basically. I can long hold on the middle key here to access the multitasking page, and you have access to this visualization, kind of like cards, which I can then flick through, and I can also see a 3D view if I wanted to, like this. So pretty similar, actually, to what we see today on uh, you know, more current smartphones in terms of switching back and forth between apps and managing the RAM. Over on the left, there's a page that's customized by Samsung to display your photos uh, in an album-like view, and you can also change this to display contact information for phone numbers as well. So if we launch into something like, let's say, Office, uh, we can see a few productivity tools, such as Quick Office allows us to view, edit, and create Excel, Word, and PowerPoint documents. There's also a separate PDF viewer on here too, a zip uh, compressor. And I can tap on Notes to take a quick look at, say, a memo. And if we wanted to create a new memo, we can tap on here and the keyboard pops up. So the nice thing about Symbian uh, OS is uh, especially 10 years ago, it was one of the more popular smartphone platforms. So there are still quite a few applications that you can find online that you can download and then sideload onto the phone through USB. So the keyboard that we have here is actually a swipe keyboard, which uh, is interesting because I didn't even uh, think that it would be on a Symbian's phone from 10 years ago, but it is here. And if I wanted to, I can just swipe my way across these letters for faster text entry. So for instance, this and you can see that it's correctly guessed a word and I can pop it in for very quick editing. Of course, I can also use the accelerometer here and that gives me a more comfortable uh, kind of typing experience. And the screen here at 3.7 inches also really isn't bad in terms of size, especially since it is very sensitive. And you can keep in mind that the original iPhone and the iPhone 4S has a 3.5 inch display. So the Omnia HD at 3.7 inches was actually, again, considered as one of the larger display smartphones. And then there's something called My Media, which is another kind of 3D visualization of all of these programs. So you can see Samsung trying to play around with uh, you know, their animations as well as their software tricks, really customizing the experience, which on a platform like Symbian or Windows Mobile really is... Uh, not bad because these are not platforms that were designed to be very finger friendly or optimized for touch back in the early days. So work like this actually made sense as opposed to on say Android where it's already very good as a stock OS. Under communities, you'll find access to some social media uh, services like Facebook, Flickr, YouTube, Picasa, but these are basically just links to the browser. So it's going to fire up the web browser uh, and you can see a mobile version of the page. Uh, so surprisingly, they actually still will work, but you have to use patience uh, because the processing speed is kind of slow and web pages have become much more complex. Uh, since a decade ago. So it's going to take significantly longer to render. Sometimes RAM will run out if you have open applications, things like that. There's also Opera Mini. So if you don't want to use the stock browser, uh, Opera Mini is a good choice because it uh, optimizes pages and tries to load things through Opera servers first to compress the, the size. Um, it makes a lot of sense on an older phone because it makes the experience seem snappier. So if you are trying to pick up an older phone, a, a tip in general is to download something like Opera Mobile to try out. There's also also access to Nokia Maps and Google Maps because there are 
uh, GPS antennas on here for turn-by-turn -turn directions, and it still works. There's also Mobile Paint, which uh, is a pretty simple interface, but allows us to draw something like OS reviews, for instance, and we can see that the screen itself is actually pretty responsive, again, for an early device. Here's a, a racing game on the phone from 2009. The Omnia HD really was not meant as a phone that was uh, sold uh, in the US because you had to pick it up unlocked, and back then a flagship phone without a carrier subsidization was still quite expensive, and uh, the Omnia HD could be found for around $700, $800, which uh, you know, doesn't seem as much maybe as the iPhone 10 today, which is a grand, but you have to keep in mind inflation, and so back then it was, you know, uh, worth considerably more than a lot of contract devices, which is why it wasn't quite as a popular device in the States. Uh, even though it has very high specs and a very impressive display overall. But you can find it abroad more commonly, I think, on some other carriers, also offered, of, of course, unlocked. So before we end this video, just a very quick look at the web browser. So I'm using Opera Mini since it is one of the more optimized uh, browsers that you'll find in terms of loading speed, as aforementioned, and the interface is pretty good as well. There's always access to a quick Google search bar, and that uh, actually works quite well. Your bookmarks are also down below here, so some of the pages I've visited, including Pocket Now, BBC News, are populated down below, and multitasking for different apps are also down, different pages are down below here as well. Um, so overall, you can see that this is what Google looks like, so not the most uh, well-rendered page, but uh, I can also tap on the desktop version, and this is what it looks like, double tap to zoom, and it still remains actually a pretty responsive overall experience, as you can see here. So Wi-Fi reception, signal strength, all seems to be quite good, and using Opera Mini, you can still definitely still get around when it comes to web browsing. So that's the Samsung Omnia HD. It's incredible to see how fast technology moves and evolves, as well as to see how ideas are iterated over again and again in the consumer electronics industry. That concept of stereo speakers, as well as having a really great camera, pretty decent build and construction, are again repeated on flagship phones from Samsung. We also saw a pretty nice AMOLED display even on this early touchscreen device, as well as a early version of TouchWiz OS. Of course, many things have been improved upon since then, but it's also interesting to see how this phone is still quite usable today for light uh, backup purposes. I wouldn't use this as a daily driver by any means, but for quick phone calls, for things like a very quick web browsing as well as viewing back some content stored locally as an mp3 player mp4 player media player sure it still works all right with the pretty good speakers and an audio system built on in uh, it was also one of the phones that i really wanted to get my hands on but just couldn't when it first came out it's definitely a very nostalgic experience so you can check out more details about this in the links down below, but for now this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been our throwback retro review of the Samsung Omnia HD, also known as the i8-910.